So uh, it's hard for me to say something is impossible unless it violates the laws of physics. Mm. I guess I guess true immortality is impossible because the universe will cease to exist one day. So, um, but physical immortality or biological immortality in the sense of not aging, there's no reason to think that's impossible. We know that there are species that appear not to age, so um, there's no reason to think that we cannot engineer our biology for us not to age as well. So I think that's possible. I think the question is, okay, is that gonna happen in the, the near future? Um, there's no evidence for that. I mean, we cannot engineer immortality in, in animals. We can, um, we can extend lifespan, as I said, we can extend lifespan in mice up to 50%, but the animals will still age, they will still die. Um, and even those effects, even though they're impressive in animals, we're not sure they're going to be applicable to human beings. So I guess for the foreseeable future, what we have is this manipulations that we can do in animals of slowing aging to a certain degree. As for stopping aging or reversing it, well, that's not possible yet. I do think it will be possible in the future, but not in the foreseeable future. So you take 50 years, it can take 500 years, it can take 50,000 years. We, we just don't know. So you don't have a, a timeline? I think anything beyond 50 years is science fiction. Anything can happen. We can have a nuclear holocaust and all of us down. We can have um, a magic you know, discovery that allows us to do things in a way nobody ever suspected were possible. But many uh, futurists say that uh, you know, the singularity is near and uh, things will start changing really rapidly after 2030, something like that. Do you agree? Um, again, I, I don't see any evidence for that. I mean, maybe it will happen, maybe it won't. It's, it's again, it's, it's a prediction. So we don't know if it's going to turn out to be true or not. A bit like a nuclear holocaust. We don't know if Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump will have a fight and they'll start a nuclear war and we all die. I would probably say that's more likely than us having a singularity. Uh, I.e., us going extinct is more likely than us um, reaching escape velocity within the very short time scale. But nobody knows what's going to happen for sure. Um, I guess as a biologist and as a scientist, um, biomedical scientist, what I can do is I can extrapolate what we're discovering uh, at the basic science level to humans because that's normally what happens. What you see now in terms of medicine is um, the, the result of discoveries done decades ago. So what we're discovering in biology of aging is a slowdown of the aging process that we can achieve in animal models. So I think there's a reasonable chance we're going to do that in humans. I think, I'm, I would say I'm optimistic that we will develop longevity drugs, drugs that slow down aging, because that's possible in animals, we know how to do it. Um, as for immortality or reversing aging, again, that's not possible yet in, in, in animals, so there's no reason to think that's going to be possible in, in the near future for human beings. Uh, so what's your forecast for the current generation? How long will my generation live on average? Hmm. I mean people in developed countries who have access to all those agent reversing technologies. So I, I am optimistic that lifespan will continue to increase, just like it has for decades now. I'm optimistic that things like longevity drugs will come to market in the first four for, for, uh, for our generation, so something that will occur, that we will benefit um, in the foreseeable future. I don't think the effects will be massive. I don't think we're going to live 200 years, but we may live 5, 10 years longer than we're living now, maybe 15 years longer. Um, so I see that happening. I see people living longer, a modest degree, um, in the next few decades. Um, as I said, after that, you know, it's, it's science fiction. I mean, what's going to happen 50 or 100 years yeah, from now, it's, it's, we don't know. But as far as I know, most of the progress with uh, increasing the life expectancy is due not to some scientific discoveries of recent times, but due to just a high level of life and uh, access to medicine, access to good food. Um, so there hasn't been no significant breakthroughs that uh, allow us to extend our lives uh, by doing something to our genes up to now. True, uh, yes. W what are you uh, saying when you say uh, medicine for uh, reversing aging? Well, what I mean is, so take, for example, some of the medicines we have now. 
Statins would be a good example, cholesterol-lowering drugs. Mm -hmm. They help millions of people. Um, so, and if you have high cholesterol, you'll be on them. Most likely for the rest of your life. So if we have a longevity drug, let's say metformin works as retarding mm -hmm. aging, then, well, already millions of people take metformin for other uh, diseases like, like type 2 diabetes. So you would have individuals, people taking those drugs in order to live longer. So Just that, on, a regu on a regular basis. Exactly, on a regular basis. So, and, and then we see that already. Now, okay, so you can say, well, we haven't really done much about the aging process. Yes, we have tackled some age-related diseases like with statins, like with metformin. Um, so there are some diseases we've been able to tackle or at least diminish or at least control to some degree. But we haven't really done all that much about aging, and that's true. We, we, need to, we need to really retard the process of aging if we are to continue increasing our lifespan and our health span. Um, but there has been, you know, I'll give you one example. The percentage of elderly people now with, um, with teeth, with the teeth that they, were, uh, that they had with the natural teeth, it's much higher than it was 50 or 100 years ago. That's down to fluoride to fluoride-based toothpaste. Mm. So, now that doesn't contribute to mortality because you don't die because your teeth don't work, but that contributes to a health, to a, a well-being. So there are areas where there has been progress, there has been medical progress in improving the lives and the quality of life uh, of elderly individuals. Um, so I wouldn't underestimate that, but clearly much more needs to be done. And we need to really focus on at least retarding the process of aging. That, that is the next step in improving the human condition. What about other ways to immortality that uh, tra transhumanists speak about? For example, digital immortality, uploading your consciousness. What do you think about them? I'm, I'm not persuaded that a copy of my mind is me. You, know, you, can make, you don't agree? Okay. Well, I think it's, it's maybe more of a philosophical issue than a scientific issue. But if you make a copy of my mind, okay, you make a copy of me into a computer, you know, but then you take a knife and you stab me, that's still going to hurt, you know, I'm still going to feel that. So, so what if there's a copy of me? I, you know, I don't want to feel that pain. I don't want to die myself. So I think there's a biological element of me now that I can't foresee how you can untangle that from my mind in a way. I, th I can see in the future making copies of my mind, but they're not going to be me. So, so it's not it's like having your twin brother. That's not me. That's a different person. So what happens to that person is not what happens to me. Well, um, it's not, uh, I think, uh, the comparison to twin brothers is not very accurate because twin brothers have uh, different uh, life experiences and stuff like this. No, We're talking your, your about uploading your mind, which has the same memories. Uh, but the they will differ thoughts. at some point, no? Um, if I make a copy of my mind into a computer, sure, at, at that moment in time it's the same as me, but then it will diverge. Well, uh, that problem can be solved by uh, making the copy in the moment the person dies. So, uh, your biological body dies, mm -hmm. but your mind is uploaded and there is continuity. In this case, is this you? No, because still no. It's, it's still not you, because, okay, you died, but, well, let's say you don't die, it's still not you. So the fact that you die, that you cease to exist as an individual, doesn't mean that that other copy of you is you. Just, just uh, a copy of you. The way I see it is a copy of you. Don't you see it as falling asleep and waking up just in a computer? No, I see a copy of me waking up. Okay, but... Uh, are you going to do uh, mind uploading if the technology is available? Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a bit like, uh, well, it's a bit like, would I like to have a clone of me? I mean, okay, okay, I guess a clone would take a very long time to generate. But uh, would I have to like to have a copy of my mind? I guess as a scientist, I have a natural interest. I have a natural curiosity. I would like to speak to a copy of my mind. Um, so, why not? And if you clone yourself and upload your consciousness into your clone, mm -hmm. in that case, will it be you? No, it will be a still, copy of me. Still yes. that, yeah. still. <laughs> because you can, and you, you can make more than one copy, you can be five mm -hmm. copies of me.